Hey, good morning, friends. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're gonna to talk about winning the day. That means setting yourself up for success right from the start, which includes things that you do immediately when you get up, of course, but also things that you might do at the nighttime as well. This is a productivity day. We're gonna help you get the most and maximize your efforts out of your time awake, of course. And uh, I'm excited to chat. We also have a special guest coming with us today. If you have a guest, feel free. Now that you know what this topic is about, I'm curious to see if you might be able to guess who our special guest is, who's going to be coming in in about 10 to 15 minutes. But we have a lot to talk about because productivity is something that I was struggling with in the beginning. If you're here live with your friends, say hello to each other in the chat. And again, good morning to you. And if you're here watching the replay, hashtag team replay. Let's get it. This is the Income Stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the Income Stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The Income Stream with Pat Flynn. We got Chuck with us. Says, wow, super early. Yeah, we're a little bit earlier today. Uh, it is not Hal Elrod, the Miracle Morning Guy. This is a new shirt for Pat. I've never seen this one. Yes, Elton is very, very observant with the t-shirts here. Always pointing out when we got new shirts. We got Tina in the house. What's up, Stephanie? Bill, uh, Sir Yanch. We got uh, Peasant Uprising, B-Roy, Grandma Goody, Asma, Kathy. Welcome in. Thank you again so much for joining me today. So yes, productivity. We're going to have a special guest coming in. Nobody has guessed it yet. But I'm really excited. It's not Ben Newman. And uh, again, we'll have to see. And um, it'll be a fun conversation because this person, uh, they and I have done a lot of fun things together. We've spoken on stages together. Uh, we've done a lot of really cool things. So really excited to have this person join us in just a moment here. But Hakuna Matata, no worries. We're going to keep going here. Hakuna Matata, as you can see. And uh, Natasha, welcome. Justin, Max and Cheese, McAllen, Luke, Awesome. So productivity, something that I wasn't really uh, that really big on, in fact. To me, it was just like, let's get as much done possible in whatever time that we have. And I didn't really take a approach to it holistically, if you will, with just my life. But that all changed because there was, there was actually a couple moments where I had uh, red flags, if you will. One of them was in 2009, my wife was pregnant with our son. And uh, this was going to be our first child. And I was working hard. I was hustling. Hustle, hustle, hustle. And unfortunately, that got in the way of our relationship for a little bit. Now, for me, in my head, I was always justifying, oh, but I have work to do. Um, the more work I can get done, the better it's going to be for our family. Uh, the more work I can get done and the more hours I can spend on it now, the more I'll get back later, right? The whole reap uh, the benefits later situation, just like in the tagline of my podcast. But unfortunately, I remember there was a specific moment. There was a time when uh, April, my wife and I, we were legit having like a conversation or so she thought because she and I were talking. I saw her mouth moving, but I wasn't registering what she was saying. You know why? because I was thinking about my business. I was thinking about the next email I had to write or the fire I had to put out or the next sales copy I needed to write. Uh, and again, the business had just started to take off. So I wanted to put more fuel on that fire. Well, I could tell that she knew that I wasn't all there. You know how I could tell? Cause she literally called me out on it. She said, hold up. You're thinking about your business right now, aren't you? Like straight up in the moment, she just straight up told me, you're not here right now. And me being, I don't know, a guy, if you will, or not wanting to get caught, I basically said, no, I'm totally listening to the conversation right now. Like I'm, I'm with you. And she goes, okay, well, what did I just last say? What was the last thing I said? And I think for a second, I don't know what she just last said. And so I, thinking I'm clever uh, and maybe can lighten the mood a little bit, say, oh, the last thing you said was, uh, you're thinking about your business, aren't you? Yeah, not cool. So that wasn't good because I had then um, enjoyed the couch that evening. And unfortunately, we got into a little bit of a quarrel. 
But I'm also gonna say, fortunately, we got into a quarrel because that's what it took for me to really realize that I didn't have boundaries, right? That I didn't have um, constraints, if you will, for when I was going to be thinking about work and when I wasn't gonna be thinking about work. Now, there were a couple strategies that came into play there, but that was just a sign that, okay, this business thing, this entrepreneurship thing can potentially take over without you even knowing it and having it affect other parts of your life. So two things I put into place around that. Number one, a time boundary. So I know we all hear that phrase, escape the nine to five or get rid of the nine to five or screw the nine to five, if you will. But the beauty of the nine to five is you walk in the office at nine, you're working, you walk out of the office at five, you're done working, you can be all at home with your with your with your kids, with your loved ones, or with whatever it is you want to do, you're checked out. Uh, as an entrepreneur, especially when working from home, you don't have that. So you got to still put those time constraints. And we've talked about using the calendar and time blocking and other strategies like that here in the past too. The other strategy that I used was putting physical boundaries into place. No, not like locking up my laptop in a cage and only having it accessible at certain times. Again, to me, that's really more of a time boundary than a physical boundary, but more of a space in the, at the time it was an apartment, a specific space in the apartment where, guess what, work was done. And if I was sitting in this spot, work was getting done. If I wasn't sitting in the spot, I knew to check out. And also April knew that I was checked out and it wasn't fair to her. And that was something that I really needed to understand, right? It's definitely hard to turn off for sure. The second sign was after our kid was born, Keone. Uh, he was about three months old, I don't know, 12 pounds at this point. And I remember carrying him up the stairs. We had moved into a house at this point um, that we were renting. And I remember carrying him up the stairs. This was probably exactly a year later, in fact. And I remember huffing and puffing. It was like 12 steps, but I got at the top of the stairs and I was like, Whew, out of breath from just holding a 12 pound baby going up the stairs. I hadn't gotten a lot of sleep for obvious reasons. I hadn't been eating well, maybe for off, off obvious reasons as well, because it was not really conducive, uh, having a child and trying to eat healthy and spend time to cook and uh, go to the grocery store. It was so much easier just to get fast food. And typically the fast food was um, Mexican food. We live in San Diego, so Mexican food is like so good here. And we were, you, we uh, probably, it was either a California burrito or a order of carne sada fries. <laughs> carne sada fries are legit. If you don't know what carne sada fries are, you're missing out. It, they're fine every once in a while. But I think that if you were to consider like, that was like a four day a week kind of occurrence because it was easy. Well, guess what? Walking up the stairs didn't become easy anymore. And my health was affected. And so that lesson really taught me that my health and my, um, so I have Jarvis with me too. He's just chilling down here. Jarvis, you're cool. It's a little bit earlier, so April is not awake yet. But um, yeah, your health took a back seat for sure, Kathy. And as a result of that, my work was affected as well. As a result of that, I wasn't able to as easily help out around the house. And I just was mostly lethargic all day. Now, if you've been a parent or have been, a, uh, are a parent, excuse me, um, you know what it's like in those first days, like that's gonna happen, right? It's a very common thing. It's very difficult to focus on health while raising a baby just with all the things going on. But at the same time, it really clicked for me that I had to take care of my health and I had to get proper sleep. I had to get proper things to eat. Hey, Jarvis, get out of there. You guys wanna say hi to Jarvis real quick? Oh man, you're getting so big. Hi Jarvis. 60 frames per second, Jarvis. It's like, what's up here? <laughs> what's up here? You're doing good, bud. I know it for sure, Pat, says Peasant Uprising. Burritos on the couch. Finally, Jarvis is live on the show when I'm here, says Elton. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. So, uh, health, sleep, absolutely important. But then you start to get into the nuances of those things, and especially as an entrepreneur who's focused on trying to get as much work done efficiently to work smarter, not necessarily harder, um, you start to learn that there's even other more quote unquote tricks, if you will, or more nuances within the realm of health and sleep and eating, within the nuances of productivity and scheduling and calendar, all those kinds of things. So Rachel says, stole the show. Exactly. 
Bill, I don't know why you're using hot dog emojis there, but I'm going to let it pass. <laughs> Jarvis, stay away from Ultron, yeah. Uh, and stay away from Wanda. Just be careful. She's, she's going crazy right now. Anyway, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. So, you okay, bud? Hold on. Okay, he's good. He's good. He's eating his leash. Um, so, yeah. So, in a couple of minutes here, like I said... Uh, we are going to have a special guest on who's going to give us the rundown on exactly how we can approach our day to win. Uh, for me, a couple things that I do on top of that, I definitely meditate every day. Um, five minutes is all I need. I had done it for maybe six to seven years now, almost every day, almost every day. And for a while, I was using an app called Headspace, which is a beautiful app. I love it. And then I got involved with a product or a tool called the Muse. It's really interesting. It's like this headband and it connects to your um, forehead, just kind of placed on your forehead. You don't like puncture yourself with anything. And then after that, what you do is you open up an app to go with it and it actually reads in real time your brain waves and how much activity there is. And it can sense when you are thinking about a whole bunch of things and it can sense when you're a little bit more calm. And that's again called the Muse, M-U-S-E. And that is something that, uh, completely changed my life. It gave me some time to breathe. It gave me some time to just kind of relax. And I didn't realize how important meditation was. I now use Headspace again. I'm no longer needing to wear that device, but I know what meditation feels like now. No, it's not zero thoughts and emptiness to clear everything. It's just focus. And whether that's focusing on my breath, whether that's focusing on my counting or whatever it is, it's just the matter of can you have a one track mind during that time and focus on one thing in a more relaxed state. Network Chuck says, how many days a week do you work? Uh, I work five days a week, um, but I don't have to. And I think that I'm just thinking about the current situation that we're in. I'm here at the house, we're not going anywhere anyway. Typically what would happen would be a four day work week. And that's actually something that I've seen a lot of businesses implement. Michael Hyatt has implemented a four day work week into his business or a three day weekend. The entire company is thriving and they're becoming even more profitable as a result, which is really cool. Uh, but for me, five days a week because I am working on a lot of other side projects and the kids are in school, my wife's uh, doing her thing, and so we can easily sort of manage that uh, without any problems or issues, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that's been really helpful for productivity is journaling. Journaling is absolutely key, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, focus, understanding, direction, um, creating constraint, and creating goals. Uh, I use a number of different journals. I know there's millions of them out there. I, for a while, used the uh, Freedom Journal and Mastery Journal by John Lee Dumas, which is really great. Still recommend it. Uh, the Full Focus Journal by Michael Hyatt's really amazing. And our special guest has a journal as well. So that's a little clue for you if you want to continue to take guesses. Um, what's up, Poke Kinono? Good, good to see you here. Silverpaw Studio. Monique, thank you. Ryan in the house. Scooby Life, welcome in. And... One journal that I use every day is is called the five minute journal. And I love this because it allows you to think without taking much time about the things that are going to happen in your day and the things that have happened in your day. So the way I use that is I use it in the morning. I write down the things that I'm grateful for. I think gratefulness is absolutely key. And it's a great way to start the day with a win is to think about despite all the crazy things that might be happening, despite your perhaps crazy schedule and the way in the state of the world, you can still consider that there are things to be grateful for. And starting your day with that is really key. I didn't realize how important that was until I stopped doing that exercise, truly. Um, and then ending the day thinking about the great things that have happened. I think a lot of us go through the day and we don't even realize the things that we either accomplished or the great things that have happened. And to record that, I think, is very beautiful, very interesting. And it's a thing that we can go back to later just to kind of have little memories. This journal becomes a trigger for you so that you can recall some of these things that have happened that normally would just get s stored in you know, that part of your brain where it's only going to be recalled if you actually uh, have something to trigger it. So not Michael Hyatt, nope. Shalene Johnson says, Wendy, good guess, but nope, that is not our special guest today. Let me see. Cool. Let's see here. Awesome. Michael Slowinski, nope. 
Was that the um, clockwork person? Clockwork? Uh, Michael from Profit First as well. He wrote, uh, Alex Icon. Nope, not Alex. And again, super excited for the conversation today, which will happen in just a moment. But do any of you do any of those things that I mentioned? Or what, what is one thing that you might do during the day to help improve your chances of uh, winning the day, if you will? I uh, love, would love to hear it in the chat. And I do see our special guest in the green room right now ready for us. And I'm going to call this person in in just about 30 seconds here. But I would love to see the kinds of strategies that you're trying to implement into your day, especially at the start of your day, to see how you can set yourself up for success. And speaking of setting yourself up for su success, there's no better person that I know to talk about this topic than our special guest today because she is somebody who has been a dear friend of mine and she has just skyrocketed both on her YouTube channel as well as with her products and her following and her Instagram. Everything is so branded perfectly right now. Uh, let's just bring her on. So welcome, Amy Bandino. How are you? Ah! I'm so excited. <laughs> now we're awake. What's up? What's up, Amy? Good to see you here. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. And what a great intro. That was so nice. Anytime you tell everyone that I'm branded perfectly, like that's the way I want to start my day. <laughs> and I want to start out with that, in fact, because you are branded perfectly now. Amy Landino, you have this great theme, not just the colors, but the message. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But I remember the first time I saw you, Amy, was when you were doing these daily videos about news about social media. And this was, I don't know, 2011, 2010. And you were just kind of showing up as much as possible. And it was still, I could tell you were still figuring things out. What was life like back then in terms of your business, your brand? How are you trying to figure out who uh, you were and, and what your voice was back then? That is such a great question because I think it's it's so funny to think back to then and how still valuable that information I think is for most people today because we're all trying to figure out what works. But anytime you're starting out, the best thing you, you, you can do to figure out what works is just to do a lot of stuff. At the time, I knew that I had a skill set of editing video. I didn't exactly know who I was as a thought leader at that point, but I knew what I did for my clients and what I wanted to do for more clients. And so to bring awareness to that, I was like, well, why don't I just make videos about this kind of thing so people feel like they're informed and on the pulse. And at the beginning, I totally was not recreating the wheel. I was making videos about what I was seeing was happening in the news. Like this is stuff that you should know about. And at the time it's like, Twitter comes out with a video feature. Like that was like major back then and all this yeah. kind of stuff. So it was a really, it was just a, to connect me in an informative way, in a valuable way to the outside world in a particular area of expertise so that people would think about sending me business. When did you feel like you really found your voice and you started to step into this world of productivity and efficiency and starting off the day well and winning the day? I think you go through like seasons of finding your voice, like as you, as you execute there's, and you may have noticed this in your own career too, Pat, because when I think of Pat Flynn, I think of a lot of different things. Cause you are, are an expert over, of a lot of things you've learned in your career over that period of time. Initially it was like finding my voice in social media marketing. And then that morphed into like, okay, thank you for teaching us about social, but how do you do this video thing, right? And and so then it became a conversation about executing with video and how to do it in a really uh, effective way, but it doesn't have to be super duper professional. Like just getting your face out there is an, is an amazing thing to do. So I really hit my stride with my voice during the vlog like a boss days, like when it was um, talking about how to just leverage the video platform to let people know what you're good at. And especially mm -hmm. just people are like, how do you learn how to speak on stage? Or how do you learn how to be a thought leader? It's like, just talk, you have to practice talking. So after I wrote the book in, uh, in 2017 blog, like a boss, there was like this like pivot moment that it was like, okay, that was fun. But I feel like there's more to this story because mm -hmm. people were watching my videos and saying, just love the content have no intention of doing anything you're teaching me because I don't have time. And right. it, I just like watching you. And I was like, okay, well, let's unpack that. Like, why don't you have time? Why do you think this is interesting and that you would do it if you could, but you can't. And then it just, it, it was really just following what the audience wanted. And I know I say that a lot. And so if everyone's listening to me, they're like, yeah, yeah, we get it, Amy. You listen to your audience. Some of us have that problem. Some of us don't. It's a beautiful problem when you do have it, when you have an audience telling you what to do all the time. But when you really listen, I think that's, 
you know, finding your voice means people want to hear what you have to say. And that mm -hmm. only comes from listening really well. So going into this world now of like, good morning, good life and be productive and save time and save money and all these different things. It, it's really just come as a natural conversation flow with my community. And that just listening is the only thing I can credit for that. I'm curious because I remember, you know, I'm a subscriber and I remember there was a moment when you were really focused on a certain kind of video about like a morning routine of sorts. Yeah. And it just seemed to like explode. Was that like the sign that like, wow, this is probably the direction I should go? Because I noticed after that point, you just leaned into that so much more. And then now it's become really your brand. Was that like the moment or was that like a culmination of a whole bunch of things you think? I think it's it, I think it's a culmination of things, but I'm not going to be the person that like dances around the hockey stick moment, right? You you when you have a hockey stick moment, when I say that, it's like you've been working really, 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 really hard, and you're like working your way up, and then all of a sudden something shoots up. Like you have to listen to that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It could be product sales. It could be one particular product that goes crazy. It could be a a type of video content. It could be anything, but. It's when you have those moments that that's an indication that you listened well enough and this is really taking off. In addition to the fact that I think at the time, you know, it was a, it had a lot to do with culture and cadence on YouTube. There was a lot of things happening in the YouTube world in 28 to 2017, early 2018, that YouTube was kind of getting some flack for and they were having to answer for some things and they were learning what it means to have a platform where they may have to censor content and that's a very difficult territory to be in when you're a content sharing platform and you don't want to censor people and we've heard a lot about this in the last year with all the platforms mm -hmm. but you know it's really weird timing because all of a sudden it's like morning routine woman creator and uh, YouTube was kind of looking for more of that kind of stuff to elevate. I, I do think that there was a culmination of events that happened and I happened to be in the right place at the right time, but you can't be in the right place at the right time unless you're just trying things. And again, listening to the audience. And then when you see a moment like that and you skyrocket, you listen. If that, if, if anyone can take anything away, if you see something is working, do it again. The biggest thing in the YouTube world is when you see a video does four times better than last time, there's a reason for that, is you have to start unpacking that. It has probably something to do with the content, it may also have to do with how well your video delivery was and how much fun the video was to watch, or how great your thumbnail was, or how great the title was. All of those things, leaning in and figuring out what the thing was, that's that's all I did. It was like, okay, well, people wanna hear about mornings? I got ideas. And I just kept kind of going with it, and it really facilitated that new influx of audience that came to continue the conversation. Thank you for that. Super insightful. Uh, Stephanie, one of our mods here is sharing all your socials and your website. Uh, thank you so much, Stephanie. And welcome, everybody. We are speaking with Amy Landino right now. Good Morning, Good Life is the name of your book. And uh, you've been saying this, I think, every morning now on Twitter. You just start the day in that way. And I wanted to uh, unpack what that actually means and how we can actually have a productive day in the way that you share it, because it's so beautiful. Um, before that, I have one more question about your brand right now, because again, I'm just very impressed. I remember Chris Ducker and I, Chris Ducker is a good, uh, great mutual friend of both of ours. Um, we just kind of sit on the sidelines and we're always like, dude, did you see Amy's YouTube channel? It's blowing up right now. Or, oh my gosh, like she came up with this book. It's amazing. Like, we're just so impressed on, on the, and, and I'm just grateful to have some time. But I, I do have a question. You have some really amazing followers. You have some fans, you have super fans, people who show up every video, they're commenting every video and such, and you've been able to cultivate this 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 crowd. And um, I'd love to know in your eyes uh, and from your perspective, like why do you think what it is that you do is cultivating super fans? Um, you know, I think it's, I've always danced on this line. You know, when I first started online, it was, um, just to create. And when I think a lot of YouTubers are kind of learning now in the last five years, like how very much you need to have a business hat on. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, that I was learning to be a YouTuber, I was also really immersed in the business world because I was trying to figure out how to leave my full-time job and work for myself 
I didn't think it was because I was going to be a famous YouTuber. I just wanted to start a business. And so with those two worlds kind of coming together, I, I just always felt like I was getting the best advice on both sides. You have the super creatives who are like staying very true to themselves and they really, really want to be successful, but for the right reasons. Like it's because my video is the greatest video that ever happened. And then you have the business side that's just like, you've got to get this information out there because you're going to help somebody. I think the combination of those two things has been extremely important for me because it makes me really good at saying no to the wrong mm. things. Um, just because something's a great business move doesn't always mean it's a great move for my audience. Um, the quick buck isn't always the right buck to make. And so I think that's part of it. Um, but it's also about having a powerful conversation with your audience that it's okay to make money too, which I welcome that anytime. But there's a lot of people in my community to kind of get back to the exact question that really just don't have the right people around them. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have dealt with us in the past, especially entrepreneurs in the room. You probably had a moment where your significant other was like, you want to leave your job to do what? And mm -hmm. um, you, your mom was like, uh, that's not why we sent you to college or whatever the case may be, right? When you don't always have the right people around you, I just talked to somebody in my membership group yesterday who literally said, um, you know, because I asked everybody what their low and their loo is. The low is the life you're over with and the loo is the life you want. And you've, you've got to run away from the low and it can't be scarcity mindset, but it's got to be something that drives you to go, I never want my credit card to be declined again. I never want that to happen to me again. And somebody literally said their low happened the day before and it was negative very negative feedback from their significant other. So the mm -hmm. person you wake up to every single day saying, I just don't think that you're gonna be able to do this and I don't think you're going to be able to support our family doing it. That's challenging to hear and that's real life for everyone and we can't sit here and act like that's not happening. It's happened in our lives, we talk about it as thought leaders, but it's happening every day to the people who listen to us. And so when I hear stuff like that, I'm reminded that I think that the core feeling between me and my audience is that I get to be the person that tells them I believe in them. And I get to be the person that tells them that I've also been surrounded by people who didn't think I could do it. And I did it anyway, and I'm continuing to do it, whatever it may be. And, and I do think it has a lot to do with who you surround yourself with. And the more I can make myself appear to them and not the person they're jealous of on Instagram, but the person mm. that they're like, yeah, 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 she's doing it. That's, that's what I'm always working toward. So I would like to hope that that's part of the conversation. And, you know, um, we all have our lovely autoresponder emails that go out. My favorite one is called, you know, what are you struggling with right now? We get detailed mm. emails. We get life story. We get really challenging, deep stuff and we're willing to take that challenge on so i think that that's part of it too that's so cool thank you amy now when it comes to yeah. our day and and trying to be the most productive uh, best self that we can be what are some ways that we can do that right from the get-go right as soon as we wake up i know this is your specialty so i'm excited to hear yeah. what you have to say um there's a lot of people on the whole spectrum of productivity and i know that you take a, a very beautiful balance to that where where do you lie on that spectrum so one of the reasons why I got so passionate about the morning routine movement was because there's so many things we can do. And yet it's also paralyzing. Like if I don't have Elon Musk's morning routine or whoever is <laughs> that it's like, I'm not going to be a success, but we, you, you end up on the wrong page when you try to wake up doing something that's right for somebody else. When the whole point of a morning routine is to start the day on your own terms. So, you know, the way we kind of just broke this down in the book and in the planner was just like, just pick your three moments. And the three moments are movement, mindfulness, and mastery. Can you do something to move your body? Doesn't have to be a lot. I don't work out first thing in the morning. It's not my favorite thing. I'll do some stretching. I'll do some skincare. Like that's enough for me. Movement, a little bit of mindfulness. Are you journaling? Are you meditating? Are you doing morning pages? Are you reading the daily stoic? Like I do a number of these things. You could do one of these things. If you don't like meditation, don't do meditation. Do Just do something to avoid your phone for half an hour and have an original thought. In your own life just it, it doesn't even matter if that's um a stressful feeling that's what i love morning pages for it's not supposed to be elegant wonderful writing it's supposed to be whatever grudges you're holding from the day before or the bad dreams you had or the worries you have write them down give them a place and move on it gives you that space to move on so just having that mindful moment is huge and for mastery 
it's really that time that is my favorite, honestly, because it's the stuff that you care about, the thing that you want to do with your life, the side hustle, the passion, whatever the case may be, to spend time on what is that thing that you're trying to master. Uh, for a lot of people, it is starting that that full time, you know, freedom. And uh, learning a foreign language or practicing the piano because you never have time and you always say you want to. Um, when can you get your mastery moment? Get it first thing in the morning. If you've done those three things, whether they take an hour and a half or they take 15 minutes because it's all you got, you at least can say, you know, I started things off my way. And mm -hmm. if I have to give the rest of this day to my family, my coworkers, my boss, my team, my whoever, I, I still feel like I started the way I wanted to start. So that that would be my advice. I really want people to make it what is right for them, not what they, you know, read somebody wrote in a book has to be the case. Sure. I I love the sort of loose constraint if you will. There's just guidance here and we get to make it our own. Um and it's true. We have some of the most popular videos on YouTube being like what was Benjamin Franklin's uh, you know, morning routine, let's yeah. do that for a week and challenge and see how it is. And I think those are interesting for sure, but it's true. It's just like a diet. You got to figure out what works for you and your body and your totally. mind. Um, can I ask you a hard question? Yeah. What are your thoughts on the miracle morning? And I know Hal is great, very different approach. Here are the six things you should do. Yeah. I know he made his also, he's also like, do them and fit them in when you can, and you don't have to do them in order, but it, that's very specific versus the more general approach that gives you a little bit more room to play. Um, your thoughts on the Miracle Morning and waking up at 4.30 a.m. to start working on yourself? Listen, i am if you've ever taken the uh, Gretchen Rubin Four Tendencies quiz, I'm an upholder. So that means I'm <laughs> held accountable fairly well externally and internally. And the what reason I say that is because I'm, I'm super happy with the Hal Elrod Miracle Morning book because it's like, do these things. And it's really easy to just like know that you did the right thing, you followed the instructions. But I think that's where a lot of people get lost. They're like, well, I don't wanna write. Like, or I would rather do something that, that I would rather draw. I would mm. rather, um, pra you know, again, practice piano, do something different. And I think you just lose the opportunity to feel like you made good on the advice by not following the exact advice. And so as much as like I can totally get into a do these things and you'll be successful, you lose me at the word should. Like anytime mm -hmm. somebody puts should in a sentence for me, I'm just like gone. Like anybody that says you should do these things, which is why I avoid saying that word, but as much as possible, it, it, it's like, well, how do you know? You don't know me, you don't know my life. Like, so that's why I, I really thought that that book was an amazing book because it started to open the people's eyes, I think, about what, mm -hmm. why we are obsessed with morning routines and what does it mean to actually start creating one for yourself. But it does still feel a little bit too restrictive for most people who are saying, no, no, I'm different. No, no, my life is different. You're allowed to feel that way. And so I think you should be able to customize it. But I mean, I, I love Hal's work. I think he did great work with that book. It's just that, that that doesn't work for everyone. And I wish I could even stick with that morning routine. I just can't. Like, it's just, it's yeah. too <laughs> rigid. It's too rigid. Grandma Goody here says, don't shit on me. That's funny. Exactly. Mark says, six a lot. Three is more manageable and achievable. Good points. We had Hal on the show before too. And he's definitely made an impact on my life. I'm more of a rigid type of person who often just wants to do something that is proven by somebody else and don't want a little bit of space to play. But I guess there's different ways for different uh, people, which is really beautiful and which is why I wanted to have you on. Speaking of journals, if you will, I do have a um, present here from you and I haven't opened this yet. I'm gonna open it here Look live on the stream and it's beautifully wrapped again. Oh. I was talking about branding everybody. I mean, I don't know if you could see that, but look at that, Amy Landino with the sun. It's beautiful. Who who's doing your branding? Because they just props to them. I have a wonderful freelance designer. Her name's Nancy. I'll recommend her to anyone. It's okay. You can rip it. That's the whole. Okay. That's, that's the joy. That's the joy of opening noise. presents. <laughs> it was a lot of noise, so I was like, sorry. Yeah, she helped me a lot with that with that new branding. I just I love the sunshine. It's my. It's also my YouTube like logo at the bottom is that little sun. So go after the life you want what why do you think Cheers. like we need to hear that because isn't that obvious like why why do we need uh wh wh why does this actually matter 
I think because, and this is why everybody spells and says Gatley wrong, because the most important word in that sentence is you, which is why we made it just the letter U instead of the letter Y, because it's so important that we remember the life that we actually want, because these days we have such access to information. We have such access to anything really that it can get confusing as to what we want because there's so many options. We see people doing things. We get a little jealous. We get a little envy. We get a little motivated. We get a little excited. We start dreaming and we start to lose track. And so the question I get probably the most often is I don't know how to prioritize my time because there's so many things I want to do. Well, if there's so many things you want to do, it's because you've lost focus. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to the beginning. What is the life you want? Even if you see somebody doing something really cool, thinking about what, how, what they had to do to get to that point and going, is that actually a journey I want to go on? That's an important conversation to have. So yeah, yeah, I think it's just a constant reminder that it's like, wake up, have original thought. What do you actually want? And then how can you start working toward it? This is so cool. When did this journal, when, when did this book come out? Because, um, I think it's so smart, a 12 month planner and it has sort of the daily thing. It has goals and such that you can set for yourself up front. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's very similar to a lot of other uh, journals out there that provide a structure, but it, oh, it is very much you. And like, even check this out, everybody. At the beginning of every day, you can check off the three things that Amy was talking about, movement, mindfulness, mastery, which I absolutely love. It's just so well put together and it's not Thank small you. like some of these other journals. Like this is like in your face, a reminder every day. And I love this reminder every day from you that always comes in on Twitter. Good morning, good life. I just think the positivity, the reinforcement, the support with uh, not just the community and your membership, but with the book as well. Um, this is so dope. I mean, I mean, it, it came about September of last year. We launched the book December of 2019. Planner came out in September 2020. Um, the 12 month version just came out uh, a couple months ago. We had a we had a limited edition 16 month fully dated version before that when we first started. But honestly, like it, it, it's just it's just backing up the point that we talk a lot about planning. We talk a lot about time management mm -hmm. we talk a lot about morning routines. So what better way for you to be able to execute on it than to have the planner in your life? Certainly one that's going to stare you in the face like that when you look at your desk in the morning or at your dressing table, wherever you do your morning routine. So, but exactly. my favorite parts of the planner, I just want to say this is there's two things. First of all, I just love reflection moments. You got to have your weekly reflection, your monthly reflection so that you can touch base with yourself. Like, are we going after the life we want? But most people just get their morning routine wrong because they go stay up too late. So we have a timeline map in the in the planner as well. So you can kind of say like, okay, what does it actually look like to wake up at 5.30 in the morning if I need eight to nine hours of sleep and reverse engineering that so that mm. you then know what is your nighttime routine? Because that's, that's a big part of the equation. You don't want to wake up and just barely be able to get through your morning routine, barely enjoy it because you should actually be sleeping a couple more hours. So yeah, yeah that, that's just a couple things there. Here's a question from uh, Uncle Bill here who says, for Amy, how do we figure out what we want? I think that obviously that answer then determines all the other things. But if we want to start there, how do you find out what it is that you actually want when we've been going through life either doing what somebody else wanted or always waking up, starting the day to serve others? Yeah, I think I think it's about asking yourself a couple of questions. And, and this is the reason why I like the phrase good morning, good life is because we can only live you know, a moment at a time. We can only live a day at a time. And so when we think about what a good life looks like, it'll it escape you very quickly if you're not paying attention. So being able to say, you know, um, what does a good day look like? Like, what does my ideal day look like? That can start to unpack some things that maybe you never would have thought of before because you put barriers up when you say, well, I have to go to work. Okay, fine, but like, you have to go to work, but what if you had to go to work that you enjoyed? What would that look like? You know, and just how would you just start to think outside of the box a little bit? Another question I like to ask myself is like, where, how, where am I? What am I doing when I feel like I'm in my element? Because I think that we get a lot of energy when we're thinking about that as well. You know, even owning a business that I created from my bedroom, basically, and videos and et cetera, it doesn't mean it's not a job sometimes. Like right. work is still a job sometimes, but there are things about my work 
that I feel really in my element, really in situations like this. And a lot of good things like having these kinds of conversations and getting questions like that allow me to be in my element. And so being able to do this more energizes me more in my work, gets me excited to get up every day because I'm like, oh, I could just sit down with Pat Flynn today. Like, that's cool. That's the kind of thing I think that you're going for. So rather than like, thinking about it so big, like the life you want, just think about it on a step-by-step basis. Like, well, what would a morning look like? And that's where the morning routine idea comes from. And what would a start to the day look like? What would work look like? Do you sit at your job and you'd rather be outside working? Like have that conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. You, you can't always have this conversation with yourself when you're watching television or social media. Because there's too many ideas for you to remain true to who you are. And so I don't think you can figure it out right away. I think it takes practice having a conversation that's not scarcity and restricted, that you're willing to let yourself think outside of the box. But if you practice that enough times, you'll know when you're not looking forward to the majority of your day versus the things that you are looking forward to or the moments that you actually truly enjoy like mm-hmm. spending time with your kids or your family, but you're so preoccupied with emails and other things that you should be doing that all of that stuff doesn't get the energizing and excited attention that you would give it if it was your perfect day. So I, it's a it's a conversation with yourself. And, and unfortunately, just like in my book, it's a choose your own adventure, where in Hal's book, it's going to be less of that. This is a choose your own adventure because it's your life. I can't tell you the life that you want because you can only know that from your own core. And 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 that can be hard, but it's worth it. Thank you. Sin here just said, this is a stream I definitely need since I'm heading off to college soon. I struggle with time management and being a perfectionist. I work very slow. Um, I'm glad we're having this conversation today. I think that especially here at this time of the year, we're, March, we're in March now, which is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. But this is the time when a lot of people who were so amazingly excited about the year in the beginning, who were very much, I'm going to be on it this year. This is the time when things start to maybe slow down for people or start to change and other things, quote unquote, get in the way. And I'd love to know how you, um, like even just on a micro level, the day we start off the day, grateful for the day, we set out to do good in the world. We set out to do our tasks and do our job and do it well and get excited and live that kind of way. Yet as we often hear life gets in the way, there might be distractions or you know red alerts here and there. How do you uh, recommend that we manage our energy when we set out to do something and we, we hope a day's going a certain direction and then it kind of turns itself on its head and you know we start to have what we now call a bad day? Mm. Yeah, so I mean, a, a couple things on this, it's going to happen, right? Like that's sort of, that's why it's like, okay, let's do these things in the morning so that when things derail, we can at least say we got something accomplished. But still, wow. we want more than that. We we wow. want the rest of the day to feel like we've truly owned it. Um, something that I do is I, I try to sit down every day and, and think about how I won the day first. And, um, and you may decide to add uh, an element onto this, right? So if things got derailed, first, allow yourself to sit in the winds. Like what happened today, even if today sucked, which yesterday, I'm not going to lie. Yesterday, I was in a bad mood and I had to do a photo shoot. (laughs) So it was not a good combination. I was like, how am I going to loosen up before this photo shoot? Because I need to loosen up. Finding that energy means, okay, give yourself credit for what good happened. What were the wins? Just write like three things down that can be simple, stupid things. But then say, you know, where did things go off the rails? Because the only way that that's going to change is if you change it. If you just kind of go, well, today was completely wasted and it was so-and-so's fault or it was the economy's fault or it was the politics fault or it was Mm -hmm. my family's fault. That's very easy to do. And you know what? It very well could have been their fault. But where was your reasoned choice in that? And I think that's the bigger picture here is why did it get to that level? Why did you allow something to affect you? Or why did you allow something to derail your day? Or why do you not have any choice whatsoever? Because maybe you report to somebody they derailed your day. That could be the case. There are seasons of time that we all go through where things are not going to go the way we want them to go, but we can work toward getting it back on the track. Mm. And, um, 
And I, I say this a lot to people, especially in college, right? Uh, you see a lot of ways that people are doing things and you're like, how in the world is anyone going to have this time? Not only do I have to work to help pay for my education, but I also have to study and I have to go to class. And I actually did a, a calendar blocking video for students in college because it was mo so motivating to talk about. Cool. How do you remember that you have that time? But also remember that look at what you're working toward for this very set period of time, whatever it is for you, maybe four years. This four years is dedicated to this lifestyle of productivity so that I can get to hopefully what, what life is going to look like in the future. So allowing yourself to live in a season when it's happening and then also sitting down on a daily basis and saying, it's not about the season. I genuinely feel like I have no control over my life. How do we start fixing that? And being really honest with yourself about, I actually really like my job, but I hate the people. Okay. Well, maybe that's a thing that you can start to adjust in your attitude. And the people won't be so repulsive. Now, I could just be taking a guess that there's a very strong chance you'll still not like them. But if you approached it differently, would the day be a lot less terrible? Probably. So right. I like to sit down and, and review my wins. And I certainly like to sit down and go, this happened today and I never want it to happen again. How do I fix that? I think that's why your moments of reflections are very important in your journal. And this is why it's not just about what happens during the day because we might not have, like you said, control over that, but it's it's how we respond to that and the story we tell ourselves about that that could rewire all those yeah. things and help hopefully make the next days a, a little bit better. Um, a few comments here from Uncle Bill. Again, Amy, I see why many love you and other uh, others as well. Either way, I purchased your book, No My Core, just working toward true self wants and autumn of my life. Um, Kathy says, even as Amy's talking about my perfect day and doing what I don't want to do, I'm listening to her and doing something I kind of hate. Interesting. Um, so awareness uh, right there um, as we go along, which is cool. So big. Where can we check out the journal, all your work, and really, really quick before we finish up here in about seven to, to eight minutes? Yeah, sure. So you can head over to gatlu.store. It's G-A-T-L-U-W.store. The planner is there. We also have a book and planner pack if you're interested in both. But the book, Good Morning, Good Life, is on Amazon. Very easy to get if it, an Audible if you prefer an audio version or any of those things. Um, but gatlude.store is where the planner can be found. Gatlude.store? G-A-T-L-U-W dot store. Go after the life you want. There you go. Gatlude.store, there it is. Uh, there it is right there. And then, of course, Amy Landino on YouTube and uh, amylandino.com. There it is. Again, beautiful branding. It's all there. Um, cool. So yeah. there was a question here from Tina uh, who said, Amy, have you had a time where you were scared to take the plunge in a new project or direction in your career? And how did you push yourself to go for it? Oh, sure. Of course. I mean, <laughs> I, I think that's the that's the really fun thing is this is what I've learned. When I feel scared, like, yeah, I, I don't know if scared is the right word, but let's say it's scared, like a little a little scared. Um, it's it's then a more of a conversation of when, not if, because every time I've tried to do something that scared me a little bit or that I was a bit fearful of or I was so sure was not something for me, like public speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, it ended up being amazing and life changing. And then a skill set that, you know, is really special and just adds to the layers of what makes me different. And I like being different. I like being impressive. I work toward those things. And some of this has to do with impressing other people. And, and I've learned a lot over time that that's not always as cracked up to be as it, as it used to be. And now it's exciting because I feel like I'm impressing myself and I get to play with the, the balance of both of those. But typically when I've got a project in front of me, that's like, oh, like that feels like a lot. Mm -hmm. Or wow, I've never done that before and I'm gonna have to really educate myself and practice. Um, I just, it's, it's amazing. Cause I get this like heartbeat, like, dang it. I don't want to do it, but I have to do it. Like that's, that's what scared feels like to me. And I think that that's been one of my favorite things I've learned in adulthood is like, it's okay to be scared of something. Um, because if you think what's on the other side could change your life, then it's probably worth it. 
I had no idea you were scared of public speaking. I thought you were just an oh asshole my gosh. at that. I remember there was a time when you spoke um, internationally in front of, can you tell us? I, I think it, it, this was after you started work, working with Gary, because for those of you watching, um, Amy had become uh, one of the few who was essentially recruited, if you will, uh, by Gary Vee and his team to sort of represent uh, social media and speak on those topics and, and whatnot and um, be, a, be a speaker in a sort of, you know, um, an extended arm of Gary Vee stuff. Like, I didn't realize that. Let That's me crazy. tell that. Let me tell that story. because I know what you're saying. The, I also want to set context here, you guys, not to bring us down, but in November of 2018, um, I flew to London to actually speak at Chris Decker's event. And while I was there, the first in the first 24 hours of landing, my little brother passed away here back at home. Um, so that was very challenging. That was the end of 2018. And it was a huge hit, if you can imagine, if you've ever lost somebody. Well, you know, I at the time was also being recruited by Vayner. It was not announced yet. It was announced, thank goodness, at the beginning of the next year, because like I wasn't in the mood to promote myself as a speaker. <laughs> like at that point, right. I was like everything needed to be over. Um, but at the beginning of 2019, one of the first gigs they sent me was an astounding dollar amount to speak for 15 minutes for the crowned prince of Saudi Arabia. So let me just like, I just want you to imagine my mother has lost a child and her oldest comes to her and says, Hey, uh, my speaking agent is, is, wants me to speak in Saudi Arabia <laughs> and uh, I'm leaving in a couple weeks. Yeah. That was probably the first time my mom actually was with your job. Now you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, mom, I have to do this. Um, but that was a really, uh, that was a, that was a big, oh my gosh, are we doing this? Are we going? Like, is this a thing? That was a scared moment. But yeah. to your point, I mean, I failed public speaking class in high school. That's a great way, probably not failed, maybe got a C or something, but that's a great way to be like, I must not be a public speaker in my life. That must not be a thing for me. Like, cause the right. world has told me I suck at it. So yeah, I was definitely afraid of speaking. And here you are on massive stages speaking all around the world and continuing to crush YouTube and hone in on your skills. Uh, a number of people here are going to your channel and saying they're very impressed with the thumbnails. And again, this, uh, just Thanks. to put some perspective, like again, to our points when we first started talking today, I remember how things were for both you and I when we first started and we we're just trying to figure things out. And you won't be able to figure things out right away, but figuring out comes from, like you said, just doing. So might you have one additional piece of advice for people who are in that doing mode, who are still trying to search and find themselves, find their voice and put themselves out there and become the best version of themselves to help and serve others. My, my advice is to just keep doing it. To literally just, um, one of my, my favorite questions is I learned this one from Tim Ferriss is like, what is your version of a pianist practicing scales, a public speaker, talking and speaking on stage and going through their speech and learning it backwards and forwards. Mm. Doing the reps is, is really the only way to know if you've put this ladder on a building you actually want to get to the top of. So you might end up climbing up a little bit and practicing and practicing and practicing in it and, and, and it not be the right fit. And that's okay. Come back down, go to the next building that you're like, when you realize from that experience that I've changed my mind, that's okay. I changed my mind in a big way. When when Pat mentioned my pivot, I changed my name, I changed the YouTube channel, I changed the content, I changed it all. It's my decision, it's my brand. Mm -hmm. If Puff Daddy can become P Diddy, Amy <laughs> Schmidauer can become Amy Landino, the end, like the end. Uh -huh. So so just allow yourself to climb a ladder. If you don't get to the top and it's your choice, amazing. It means you learned something from that. So. Did I find out I was good at video by promoting one YouTube piece of content? No, I, I made a, 150, 200 videos before anybody said, you know, you're good at this. And I want to learn from you. That's really important. And people miss that because virality seems to happen so much easier in social media these days. It's not. People put the work in. They just do it someplace in some way. And then they might have moved their ladder and things started going better. Amy, thank you so much for that message. Thank you so much for coming on the income stream today. We are about uh, less than two weeks away from our 365th episode in a row of going live on YouTube. Awesome. And um, we're going to have a big 365-minute uh, stream to celebrate. 
on that final day. So it should be fun. And I'm yeah. just so glad that you're uh, a part of this here. And uh, we're here to support you. And there's a lot of links from Stephanie and the other mods in the chat for anybody who wants to check out your stuff. Obviously, uh, just follow Amy on um, YouTube. And thank you again for your time today. I think we all appreciate it so much. And it's a message that I know a lot of people, including myself, needed to hear today. So uh, thank you for taking the time. Well, I have to thank you too, Pat, because having me here, anytime you've ever wanted to sit down with me is an unbelievable pleasure because I have been a follower of yours for a very long time. And from the moment I met you here in Columbus, Ohio, I was very, very excited that we could become friends, but I have learned so much from you and everyone here watching and everyone that hangs with Pat in the morning, I'm telling you, like you are, you are in very, very, very good company. He knows what he's doing. He's going to help you go to the next level. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. I remember when we met Mission Coffee, I think it was. That's in, right. In Columbus. Um, thank you so much, Amy. I know you have a schedule ahead of you, so I'll let you go and I'll, I'll wrap up here after. Uh, but thank you so much. Take care and say hello to Vince. Bye, guys. And I uh, appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. I'll do. All right, everybody. That was Amy Landino. Um, amazing conversation. I always light up when we have a conversation with each other. And we used to see each other quite a bit in person with conferences and all those things. And now that we haven't had that in a while, this was a true pleasure and treat for me. And I hope it was for you as well. So thank you again for coming in today and watching. Tomorrow, we are going to start at, I have a calendar up here that I'll bring up in just a minute so we can let you all know when tomorrow is happening. We're going to happen at 1030. So uh, about two hours from now, tomorrow, if that makes sense. So 1030 AM Pacific, 130 PM Eastern will be tomorrow's live stream for day 354. So again, thank you so much for coming in today. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to check out Amy's stuff. And uh, what a great person to come on and support this conversation and topic today. Um, Super incredible. Thank you again for your time. I appreciate you. And darn it, I forgot the secret word. That's twice. This is a weird word. I, I just don't remember auspicious. Ah, that means on Friday I have to play at least twice. Hopefully I remember tomorrow because I don't want to do it three times. Anyway, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no feet required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. I can't believe I forgot it. I literally have the post-it note right here and I forgot it. No, it doesn't count if it's five minutes or, uh, or less uh, before the end of the show, so. All good. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Peace out. Bruh.